Greetings. Greetings. You know, give God thanks so we can meet another time to Amen. fellowship in the name of the Lord. Um, we are reading here from St. Luke chapter 8 and talking about the soul and how we are to sow in order for us to reap. And if you sow on good ground, you mm. reap well. But if you sow on corrupt ground, it will go to waste. Yes. And um, I was to just um, reflect back on what happened yesterday. And I think over the years working with him, although I, many of you probably know my job was working in the uh, government. So a lot of these sayings and things that people say, I haven't even heard it until when I went to work in the culinary world. When you're in the office, there's no time. Mm. For that, you know, it's, it's meetings, important meetings, meeting MPs on the phone throughout England, Scotland, or Wales, Northern Ireland, the Caribbean. We have no time. I mean, mm. we, we spend time, yes, of course, you know, with colleagues and socializing, but a lot of things outside of that, there is no time. We have no time to waste you going to do a certain job. On my part, anyway, and I make sure that it gets done. That's the main thing. Mm. When I'm out of the building, that's when my life really begins, and I tell them that. Once I've done my work, I leave the building, and my life is outside. Amen? Amen. But yesterday, I mean, it's nothing new that I've heard. In this culinary work, we have worked over the years, and I'm working with. Um, Pastor Winston, you know, doing so many functions. I have heard it all, brethren. Mm. I've heard it all. Wow. Those, those who want to take him home, those who want to have him, to eat him, to be oh. with him. Wow. And I, I smile because at the end of the day, people are just happy and um, they want the chef. It's as simple as that. Mm. They're thinking about food for the rest of their life, as in, you know. <laughs> yeah. The father said, man should not leave my bread alone. <laughs> That's so, right. How, how much food can you eat? How much food? You can't, you can't overeat your best. <laughs> you would bust your belly, you can't yes. overeat. But, but I thank God for the word. So, I mean, she didn't offend me at all. Oh, what happened? Nothing just came off. can't hear it. Turn it up because I can't hear my fingers cutted. I'm oh, back on anyway. So you have to take it with a pinch of salt. Yes. And we conduct ourselves in a professional manner. The same way where the seed is being sold on the ground, it, it takes um, time to, um, to prepare the ground, you know, for uh, in order for it to germinate and to take effect so you can have something fruitful after a certain amount of months or weeks or months. And it's, it's, it's the very same, those who know about the ground and so forth, you know, coming from, if you have um, a background, if you know anyone with the farming, you know that they have to till the ground and they have to make sure that you have good ground, good manure. You, you can't plant your stuff where there's a lot of stones a lot of weed, you've got to weed it mm. and you've got to remove the stones and if the ground is tough, it doesn't make sense planting anything there because it's going right. to choke and die. That's right. So when you're affecting people and we call ourselves godly people, we are Christians, Christ-like, we have to know how to conduct ourselves, mm. otherwise we can easily get ourselves in trouble because the scripture reminds us that every time you set out to do good, it even presents itself. Yes. It was, a grand, it was a grand occasion. We were there to um, support the students. It's my, um, it's the theological college I graduate from. Amen. And um, we were there to give support to one of the ministers who is now uh, graduating mm. as a doctor. She's now a doctor. And we go back to make sure that we, um, we give our support 
And uh, this lady, her intention is to have curry and to have chicken in the same plate. Um, mm. The menu was already set by the chef. And what Pastor said, he said, it's either a chicken dinner, a curry dinner, or a fish dinner, or you have vegetables, you know, and uh, salads, they're there. And um, other vegetable samosas and vegetable spring rolls and mm. chips and so on. But she wants a mixture of the meat in her plate. Okay. And I'm saying, saying to her that it's either you decide you're going to have a chicken meal or you're going to have a curry meal. Mm. I said, if you're going to have that, then I would have to talk to the chef because he's the one who set everything in order. And her reply was, I've only got to leave my skirt. What? And, and then, oh yeah, the plate straight out. And, um, and then I will have my meat. Oh, God. She said, I will have the curry and I'll have the chicken. Mm -mm. And... I've only got to leave my skirt, and she's, I said, what? And then she said to me, they're straight, you know. And I just look at her and smile, wow. and I left it. Is she Christian, then, then, Minister Kelsey? I didn't even bother to answer. Yeah. As, wow. as a Christian, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. Yeah. You wouldn't. I could see she was, if she's a Christian or she professed to be a Christian, mm. she's got a very worldly mind. Yeah. Wow. A very worldly mind. So... I left that, that, but it's nothing new to me mm. because I've heard it all in the culinary world. Working in the culinary world, as soon as people have a drink of wine or they become very happy, mm. they expect a lot of things from them. They will grab you up, they will touch and whatever, and I always make sure that I wore the scarf. I said, be on the alert. Do yeah. not take any while you're here, yeah. don't drink any alcohol, wine, whether it's low percentage mm. or not, be on the alert because when the people become very happy, yeah. they can up and get out of hand and go beyond, you know. Mm. I've, I've had people even follow me to the very kitchen uh, and also got very upset mm. on a couple of the occasions and said to them, she said she doesn't want to speak to you, you need to leave. Mm. You know, and um, he had put his shoulder to the wheel and said, look, if you want anything else to eat in this place, you've got to get out and leave. <laughs> you know, yeah. sort of thing. I I've seen it and I've heard it all. It's a word I was not used to. Mm -hmm. that, that's what it was. I, I think I've just had too much um, and I believe of bringing that there are certain mm. things that people say and do. It just surprise me. I mean, why would it take certain things out like that, you know, but I've heard it all. I've heard wow. it all. It really didn't upset me at all. It didn't upset me. No. But what I'm saying is, the whatever word was sown in our heart, it mm. has not taken place to grow. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It was That's chopped, right. chopped because it fell on stony ground. That's and right. That, it became of it. It grew to a level, but it was not enough manure. Yeah. The soil was good enough. It was too stony, and therefore nothing became of it. She heard the word, but it did not germinate. It didn't take effect mm. on her spiritual side. And there, there are conditions of earth, of eternal salvation. And when we hear the word of God, we must believe and be saved. And we have to maintain an honest and a good heart in order to keep the word of God in our heart. Mm -hmm. we That's right. Pray. We have to be rooted, grounded in truth. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's right. what we need. It. When we obey the word of the Lord, mm -hmm. we can bring forth fruit in perseverance. And right. the Bible is actually saying that when we teach and we preach and we evangelize, and when we go on the mission field to win souls for mm. God, we are giving out the word of the Lord, and it is the individual who needs to take it and do something with it. Yes. We have, we have done our job. We've given out that word. The Great Commission is said Matthew 28. We've given out the word. We have done our job. But there are some that set out and make up their mm. minds they've had a mindset that they will not change. Because they believe that the way they are going is right. So the Bible mm. tells us the way is even the right. That's right, them. yes. And it's nothing but destruction. Yes. So, so in order sometimes to turn around and try.
trying to um, communicate a couple of words, it's better to turn a blind eye to it because somebody will be challenging your salvation yeah. in the situation. Nothing but pure fun. Mm. And that's all it's I haven't got time for that. No, we haven't got time for that. Yeah. There are a couple of occasions when I would be at certain functions and I would hear the table in, uh, in big discussion, you know, about the chef. And I would, I smile and I said mm. to them, the chef is to be lent, the chef is not to be hired. And when the chef is here, the chef will not be going home with any of them. <laughs> and the chef is married and he's married to me. And so. I'm lending it. Even and not giving him out to anyone. <laughs> and then, then they would laugh. They would laugh. Yeah. And they would realize that what they have said is shit. But it, it had to be taken in good gesture yeah. because at the end of the day, we are professional people. Yes. And when yes. a professional job for God, you must expect anything. Mm -hmm. Any, because the enemy will show up at any time to test you to see your reaction. Yeah. And no matter where we go, we still have Jesus on our mind. Amen. No matter where we are going, we've got him on our mind. Whether it's a job for the government or whether it's a job for the church, yes. right there, in the church, when you're doing certain things, the enemy just show up to test you. A lot of times, a lot of times, Minister Kelsey, I think, I don't understand why it's going on the church. Because I get sort of things like, not like that kind of thing, but I see where some of the women are like Jezebels in the church. And I, I just yeah, don't understand right. that. I really don't yeah. understand that. That's right. We must remember that um, judgment starts in the church. Yeah, know. yeah. It starts in the church. And remember that the people from the world come to the church for a change. Yeah. But it's not everybody that come for a change, accept the change. Yeah. Because just like how the word is given out on different grounds, different places, to yeah. different nations, community. Is the way it is accepted, and Jesus didn't do many miracles in his own community. You must remember that. Mm -hmm. And they knew about the miracles, they knew about the word he's given out, they knew that their heart need to be changed. But the top critics, they are there to look for mm -hmm. ways and means to try to test you. Yeah. So, judgment is in the church, it's yeah. in the church, in your face. You're not going to see it anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Wherever you spend most of the time, challenges will be there. Yeah. You better believe it. It comes from small, it comes from big, it doesn't matter. They're yeah. always hoping out something to test you. And most of the time, I turn a blind eye most of the time because it's not worth it. It's yeah. not worth it because your salvation is supposed to be resting in God. At times, you can um, answer that to let them know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I hear you. I hear you. I'm human. I know what you want about, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. You can ask you can answer that, you know, in a way to let them know that you're wasting your time. You can let them know that. Mm -hmm. But right there and then we can see that the word was given out to hear and there are different communities and different people under different circumstances that will accept the word because you've got to hear it and you've got to believe it and then it takes effect. The ground has got to be a good ground that when you sow when you till the ground, you turn it over, and I see my grandparents who do it, and even with the garden, with the gardener comes to do it mm. now because um, pastors are able to do the garden. They turn it over and take out all the weed out yeah. and take all the little trash out and everything that was belong there mm. and all the choke. Whatever you're planting is removed, and therefore the ground is now become fresh and you can water it. And it can only take that effect if you have good ground, good ground. Because sometimes you can sow something and it shoot up and it suddenly it just dry down and die. I mean, there's something underneath it. It's taking away the substance from it. Mm. I remember I had um, a plant in a pot and it was a very nice plant and it grew to a certain level. And then uh, it keep dying down and I thought, what in the world is wrong with this plant? Mm. So I emptied out the soil and a piece of paper. When I looked, there was a massive worm oh, wow. eating away everything from underneath. Oh, no. so straight away, I knew the earth was good, but mm. what was inside of it was not good for it. Because the, the, the worm is supposed to move on. It's not yeah. supposed to be stable and cheeky one mm. next. So it was thrown outside. I just threw it outside. So what it is sometimes, the under effect of the sinfulness that we have inside of us, yeah. we have to give it to God. 
God bless you, Amen. sister, Minister Kelsey. God bless you. Bless you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for the word of encouragement. God Amen. bless you. I mean, if it's sent upon you, I'm going to give you peace in your soul. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. I just am going to ask you to work on me. And you bless you. Okay, greetings. Amen. God bless you all. Good to be with you. Amen. And um, yeah, Minister Kelsey expound the part of the seas over well. I don't know. I think there's much to be added to that. Um, but uh, I'm looking at the verse 9. And his disciple asks him, saying, What mean this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parable that they that seen they might 
not see and hearing, then that man not understand. It's a very interesting verse, this is. Um, because yeah. I'm looking what Jesus is saying here. His people, those who love him, those who follow him, those who serve him. God has opened the eyes to see what he speak in a parable. If you just read it without spiritual understanding, we would never understand this. What what it means about the sower and the seed. And there's a lot of things that Jesus says. He spoke in parables. For the children of God, those who love God and serve God, God has opened us yeah. spiritual eye. Yeah. You see, we have a body, you know, we have a spiritual body. In the spirit we have hands and feet and all the parts that we have physically, we have the same thing in the spirit. That's why the Bible said, walk in the spirit. We're not walking physically, we are walking spiritually in the spirit. And everything we do relating to the Lord, it is through the Spirit. Mm -hmm. It is through the Spirit, man. The Bible says, when the inner man, when the outer man perish, the inner man is renewed. And this is why we do fasting. Fasting is good. Because fasting weakens the outer man. And the outer man is a carnal man, is an enmity against God. The Bible says, the 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 the, the, the our mental ma our mind is a enmity with God, our mind, because it's not subject to the laws of God. So, in the flesh, our flesh is at war with God. You know, so these parables, parables are meant to us to perceive heaven. In the spirit, because a parable is a heavenly, is a earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So everything that Jesus spoke about earthly things, it was reflected of heavenly things. And so this is why he says, "Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God." But unto others in a parable that they seeing may not see and hearing they may not understand. If anyone wants to see and understand and serve God, God open your eyes. You know? God open our understanding, open our spiritual ears, spiritual eyes, and so we can perceive what God is saying. Amen. But people who do not live in the Spirit and who do not love God and do not serve God, they are cut off from this. You know? Many times Jesus spoke. Jesus said at one time, this temple I will destroy and raise it up on the third day. That was a parable. That was a literal thing. But many people took it literally. It wasn't literal. He was talking about his physical body, which is the temple of God. He said, I break it down, and in three days, I will raise it up again. And everyone, they were saying to him, how can this man break down this temple, which took 40 years to build? And he's going to build it up in three days. Because the eyes were not open. They could not perceive, they could not understand, but to his people, they could understand. So it's wonderful, this, this um, parable, and it's good that God has selected us and opened our eyes to understand the mysteries, yes. the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Amen. God bless you.